Supportive care has been a very important element of management of patients with uh, uh, severe and very severe plant ischemia. Now, let me tell you two sides of this. Um, remember that when patients are treated with immunosuppressive therapy, for example, they, they, they take two to three months to, to respond. Even among those patients who are going to respond, they take two, two or three months to respond. So the first eight weeks, actually, they're, 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 they haven't re responded, even those who will eventually become really good responders. So you have to support these patients very aggressively with platelet transfusions, red cell transfusions. You have to follow them very carefully. You have to uh, uh, monitor their cyclosporin. You have to monitor for toxicities. You have to keep them well and alive uh, without complications to give them time to respond to these uh, 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 regimens. And uh, fever, neutropenia, you have to be very prompt. You have to bring them to the hospital. So nobody's going to respond like the next day. So you have to be uh, aware that supportive care is critical, uh, in, especially in that uh, phase. Now, if somebody responds and they don't require transfusions, I mean, the role of supportive care starts to become less important. But in the beginning, it's critical that you have a very systematic and close approach to these patients with the blood banking, the infectious disease consultants, and the, and the ward. So that's very, very important. Now, the second uh, uh, facet to this discussion is that we did an uh, analysis at the NIH where we look at those patients who failed immunosuppressive therapy. That is, they were refractory. They still remain pancytopenic six months out in the 1980s, in the 1990s, and from 2002 onwards. And what we did notice is that although the survival uh, back in the 80s was about 10, 15 percent in patients who failed the initial immunosuppressive therapy, that actually improved uh, in the 1990s to about 30, 35, 40 percent. And in the 2002 onwards, it went up a size 50, 60 percent in patients who were unresponsive. So the interpretation of that, in part, is the fact that we have done a lot better in supporting patients for longer. Even those patients who did not respond to immunosuppressive therapy, they still require blood and platelet transfusions. They still require antibiotics. Uh, all that improved. Antifungals improved. Our ability to support patients, even with very severe forms of pancytopenia, has actually improved. So this is a testament to how far we have come in terms of supporting patients, not only waiting for the time for their response, uh, but also supporting them if they were to get a second round of immunosuppression. We can keep them outside of trouble, out of trouble. Or even if they've gone to transplant, we can also keep them out of trouble in terms of these complications by supporting them. So uh, supportive care is a series of things that involves blood banking, safer blood products, and, and filtering, and, uh, and antibiotics, and uh, antifungals, and all that kind of stuff. So if, uh, if supportive care were a drug, uh, it would be a very successful drug. Uh, the thing is that it's kind of a mixture of several things, and it's not one thing, and nobody kind of owns it. It's a bunch of different uh, things that are benefiting not only patients with aplastic anemia, but also other diseases like uh, uh, AML, induction, and transplant, et cetera. So remember, this is a disease where the marrow fails. So people become very, very dependent on supportive care. So aplastic anemia is probably one of the diseases that stresses the system in terms of supportive care, uh, l like other diseases, or even more so than other diseases. So that's why it's important that patients are treated in a, in a scenario, in a facility, where all this is provided uh, um, uh, to them so they can actually uh, uh, benefit. And I have had patients, which is kind of interesting, in this analysis, when we pulled uh, the records from patients who actually did not respond to immunosuppression many years ago, and I, I didn't think they, many of them would be alive. Uh, and when we went back, several of them were. Uh, because they were maintained on all forms of supportive care, and after a year or two, their bone marrow started to get a little bit better, and they started to improve with some growth factors. Sometimes got androgens, sometimes, you know, all kinds of different, maybe time alone just helped them. So, but again, they were maintained uh, during this time period. So I think supportive care is a major component to, to the management of, the, uh, of these patients.